Okay, we'll go ahead and call uh, our meeting to order for this third day of March. And as a reminder, if everyone could please turn off their cell phones all the way off, because otherwise it'll interrupt with our sound system. If we could stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Sandy, could we have a roll call, please? Councilmember Malama, Shippers here. Schoolman here. Stevens here. Mayor Falcons here. Thank you. Okay, at this time we'll open public comment, and we do ask that this first public comment. Oh, actually, we have to have the approval of the agenda because yes. there's a there's a, an action needed on that. Correct. Uh, that is. Thank you, uh, Mayor, members of the City Council. Uh, as I advised uh, late last week, uh, the folks that were requesting that a portion of Kenwood Road be vacated have uh, officially informed us that they are withdrawing that request. Therefore, I'm kindly requesting the City Council to uh, remove item 11A uh, from our agenda this evening. Okay. Could we have a motion to approve the amended agenda? Quick question with that, more for the public too. Is this, uh, is it being um, with, withdrawn in terms of completely or at a later date? Uh, the item is being withdrawn completely. Whether or not this item ever comes back uh, is yet to be known. Uh, and if it does, it would first need to go back in front of the Planning Commission. Okay. Okay, is there any other questions? Now, if we could have a motion to approve the amended agenda. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda as amended. It's part. Okay, thank you. Sandy, could we have a roll call, please? Council Member Shippers? Yes. Bullman? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Malama? Mayor Filkins? Yes. Motion carries. <coughs> Now at this time, we will open up the first public comment, and we do ask that during this public comment, if you could um, have your comments uh, regarding uh, the items that are on the agenda this evening. And when you come forward, if you would, uh, please tell us your name and your address, and if you could write it on that uh, piece of paper there for Sandy, she would greatly appreciate it. Okay, we'll go ahead and close public comment then. <clears throat> and at this time, um, we've been presented with the consent agenda. Are there any questions, updates, or concerns with the consent agenda? I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. Support. Sandy, could we have a roll call, please? Councilmember Spoolman? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Malama? Shippers? Yes. Mayor Filkins? Yes. Motion carries. Now at this point in the agenda, we have a public hearing. Marcus, do you want to open that? Uh, yes. Uh, thank you, Mayor and members of the City Council. Uh, the public hearing for this evening is to consider an industrial facilities tax exemption certificate uh, in the amount of $365,246 for Spencer Plastics. Uh, this will assist Spencer Plastics in the retention of 18 positions as well as in the creation of new positions. Uh, this IFT will also aid them uh, with respect to the acquisition of new equipment as well as uh, the addition of a, of a small uh, improvement to their building itself. Uh, I'm not sure if there's a representative here. Oh, yes, there is. Mr. Thibault. Uh, Mr. Thibault uh, from Spencer. Um, I don't know if you have anything you wanted to add for that or to the council? No, no not really. This is the, this is like kind of the second half of mm -hmm. their moving into the building and the offices. 
the little piece left over we didn't have when we had an IFT before, and the equipment was all added after that. But they're pretty well, they've got everything, I think, now in place, and they're operating, and everything's moved here, so it's working very well. It's a very, very impressive place on the inside. Yes. So if there's any questions from on the IFT from council members, the mayor, it just uh, um, everybody knows here pretty much who I am, except I'm Jay Thiebaud and yes, I'm a CPA. Nice to meet you. <laughs> so, except, okay. so, okay. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> all that I have. Okay. Does anyone else have anything? Any questions? Just uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Siebold, too, for I know that you've been a big part of helping that transition into the Cadillac community, and thank you for that. And please pass on to Spencer Plastics and all of them how appreciative we are. Absolutely. And it looks like um, <clears throat> this is going to <clears throat> retain 18 jobs and create new two new uh, yeah, these were these were 18 jobs that were you know in in music and they're they're retaining them down here and that adds people and they they've actually added some people That's great. since then I mean I am fairly you know so we have uh, <coughs> I think they've added a uh, two people since then Great. That's good. Thank you. And the people they've added have actually been in the administrative side, so. Mm. Nice. And the only clarification, you probably said this, but I know previously they were all transfers, but this is actually a new um, IFT, is that correct? Yeah, this is new. And the other one previously was new also. I mean, that was, but because of the six-month time constraint, we had to come in for half of it, <laughs> oh, well, or whatever it was, I think it was more than this, but we came in for that portion, which to stay within our six months, and now we're doing what was, you know, finished in the next six month period. I see. Because you, you have to do these within the six months of right. of the project, and, and if you look at that long list there, mm -hmm. we didn't even have all of that we had numbers budgeted, but we didn't have that list, and the list kind of ran over the budget before they were done. I mean, that's not unusual, so. Right. Well, thank you. Thanks for that clarification. Okay. Was there anyone else who wanted to speak during the public hearing? I'm upset. Okay, all right. We'll go ahead and close the public hearing then. Does council have anything further on that? I'll make a motion that we approve resolution number 2014-3046. And um, also the letter I saw of here, letter of agreement that's also attached for the IFT for Spencer Plastics in the amount of three hundred and sixty-five thousand two hundred and forty-six dollars. Support. Okay, Sandy, could we have a roll call, please? Councilmember Stevens. Yes. Melma. Shippers. Yes. Woolman. Yes. Mayor Focus. Yes. Motion carries. Okay, at this time we have some communications. Sandy, would you like to share those? First one is a request from Vicki Essenmacher from Friends of the Library to display a banner from April 14th to April 21st, 2014 for National Library Week. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the request to display the banner for the Friends of the Library during April. Support. And let me just say how nice it is to see something for April in front of us. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully with less snow. Sandy, could we have a roll call, please? Councilmember Malama, Shippers? Yes. Fullman? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Mayor Tokens? Yes. Motion carries. 
The next one is a request from Joy Vandry from the Downtown Cadillac Association to display a banner from April 28th to May 12th, 2014 for the Art Walk. I'll make that motion to approve the display of a banner from April 28th to May 12th, 2014 for the Art Walk. Support. Sandy, could we have the roll call, please? Council members Shippers? Yes. Bowman? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Melama? Mayor Filkins? Yes. Motion carries. And next on our agenda, we have an appointment to the uh, Cadillac Wexford Appointment <coughs> Airport Authority. Sandy? Yes, it is being recommended that William Dumont be appointed as a city appointment to the Cadillac Wexford Airport Authority uh, to fill a vacant position for a two-year term to expire on February 18, 2016. And those are, there's normally a longer period, is that correct? But he's just filling this, or are they always a two-year? No, it, it was vacant, and I mean, it's, it, the vacancy's up anyway. And he was on there before. He was. Prior mm -hmm. to, yes. Would someone like to make a motion? No, oh, I'll make a motion that we appoint William Dumont for a two-year term to be a city appointee on the Cadillac Wexford Airport Authority with the term ending February 18th, 2016. Support. Sandy, could we have the roll call, please? Councilmember Spoolman? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Malama? Shippers? Yes. Mayor Filkins? Yes. Motion carries. <coughs> Mr. Petta, the city manager's report is next. Thank you, uh, Mayor, members of the city council. The first item is an off-premise sign request. This request um, is perhaps familiar. Uh, it's for the Louis Lunch on the Lake. Uh, as with the request last year, uh, none of the details uh, have changed. Mr. Richardson's uh, Louis Lunch on the Lake is uh, the funding arm of the local uh, Cadillac chapter of the Depression and Bipolar Support Alliance, or DBSA, uh, which actually does allow then for, uh, for that operation to have the off-premise signage permitted, whereas prior to that, uh, that was not allowed before that um, uh, a relationship was formed. The uh, Council communication packet does list uh, uh, staff comments as well as uh, recommended uh, conditions upon approval, uh, A through G, uh, which states how, how and where the signs can be placed, uh, how it has to meet all the requirements of the Michigan Department of Transportation, um, how it can't you know, disrupt the movement of pedestrian traffic and things of that like. Uh, the recommendation is to approve this request as it as it is uh, written in the agenda packet. Uh, certainly, I believe Mr. Richardson is here. I think, yes. If there's any questions for him, likewise, if there's any questions for myself or for Jerry, uh, we're here as well. So. Was um, were there two signs last year or just one sign? I don't recall ever seeing two signs. Did you have two signs last year too? We had the approval of it. But Louie, if you could just come up to the mic. Yeah, there, there were a couple out. No, we're there. Yeah. We had the approval for it, but we didn't have the funds to get um, the, second. the second sign, but we do have them made now. Wasn't there one on Mitchell Street, though, as well, I thought? Right, the one on Mitchell Street. Is that just the one sign? Maybe it was one, you just moved it around then? Because I thought I saw two. Mm -hmm. No, there was just the one down there. It stayed at the same spot. Then we also had the approval to have it down next to uh, across Unshapen Street. Unshapen, Unshapen and Mitchell. So our normal one's right by Lake Street, by the pavilion, where it's been for years and years. Mm -hmm. Then when we finally got approved for the off-premise sign, we put it right down in Mitchell, except for when the uh, uh, farmer's market would be there, we wouldn't have it up. And then when we got the approval to have the second one down by First Baptist, we just didn't have the funds to do that. So are you going to recreate the one that you have? Yes, there we have we had people come step up and donate the extra signs for us. Our money goes to last year we took 345 uh, consumers and mental health out of AFC homes down at Detroit Tigers and that's what that cart tries to do every year. 
And so sometimes that takes every nickel we have. And we didn't have extra for science. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Thank you. Okay, is there anything else on that? Everybody okay? Okay. Would we have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the off-premise sign request from LJR Enterprises with the conditions as presented. Support. Sandy, could we have a roll call, please? Councilmember Malama, Shippers. Yes. Fullman. Yes. Stevens. Yes. Mayor Fulkins. Yes. Motion Thank carries. You. Thank you. Um, the next item is with respect to an upgrade of our tax billing software. Uh, the city of Cadillac uses uh, BSNA tax billing software for <coughs> its special assessment tracking, assessing, uh, tax billing, uh, and delinquent tax uh, collection activities. Uh, we've had this software since 2005. This is used throughout uh, the state in most communities. It's also used by Wexford County. Uh, and at this point in time, uh, there is the need to upgrade essentially in order to um, uh, be compliant with all the latest updates. And, and Owen, also correct me if I'm wrong, but it'll also help continue to make us um, uh, work rather seamlessly with the county system as well. And we use the county for. Assessing. Yep, the county does our assessing. They have an assessing software that's BSNA. They've made the upgrade already. And so there's, uh, it's been pretty seamless so far between the two different systems but this will get us on par with where they are and uh, there's there's some more flexible and and better features and this will be the platform that they continue to support into the future so uh, it's kind of a necessary uh, upgrade at this point as marcus said to uh, to be eligible for their software updates and and continued support so it's a very standard piece of software bsna i don't know a percentage but but uh, nobody even really else sells it in Michigan because BSNA has, has kind of cornered the Michigan market. They just do a great job. So, um, And just piggybacking off of what our finance director just said, this is not available from any type of third-party source. Uh, therefore, it is a sole source purchase, which is why uh, the recommended action this evening uh, is to uh, waive the competitive bidding and to award uh, the uh, uh, the new software upgrade to BSNA at a cost of $21,860. And that price, just to let you know, includes training their their cost to come on site, do training to install and upgrade the software. So that's kind of a turnkey, turnkey price. I'll make a motion to waive competitive bidding for this piece of software. Support. Sandy, could we have a roll call, please? Councilmember Shippers? Yes. Bowman? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Malama? Mayor Falcons? Yes. Motion carries. I'll make a motion to approve the purchase of BSNA tax billing software at a cost of $21,860. Support? I have a question. Too. Okay. I'll get it right this time, Mr. Roberts. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Not like your nickname, like last time, but um, has there been any, like, Opportunity something like this where we can combine with the county and do I know some other times we can take advantage of basically this is the, the this kind of price. includes all that I mean it, it really is a, a um, mm -hmm. you know you kind of get the benefits of that already um, our our rep inter interestingly enough is kind of a local local guy that that moved downstate a while ago and and uh, um, you know he's he's done a very good job i think of giving us a fair price so knowing that kind of everybody else in the area has it i think this is uh this is the best price that we can get on this yeah is that is that what you're kind of talking about or to cooperatively bid something like this is but i didn't know too if this mattered on how many parcels if that's part of the pricing it, it, too. their pricing is based on a parcel count but it's each individual jurisdiction so you know the county if they're assessing right. you know 30,000 parcels and we're billing for 6,000 we're we're kind of uh billed and charged based on the level of of our parcel count so it is already based on that's how they tier their pricing is is the size of your jurisdiction so most likely if we were doing this independently that price would be a lot higher 
Yeah, I mean, probably. And if, yeah, if this was a company that was not um, so popular in Michigan, and, and if, if you had looked at the agreement, I think there was some discounts built in into the uh, pricing of the actual software. So, yep. So along the same lines as uh, Mr. Stevens' questions, I was sitting here thinking the same thing. Um, so there must be somebody from the county that administrates it for the county, and then you must m administrate it for the city? Yeah. Has yep. there ever been any discussion to have one administrator for both? Well, you know, I think probably to do that, you would have to have the same jurisdiction sending all the bills, collecting all the payments. Um, if, if we're going to have this here and be able to collect payments and to respond to customer service uh, issues when they come and ask questions about their tax bills, we would need to have the software installed here on our, on our site. So uh, from my understanding in the way that they uh, offer their software, it's kind of on a jurisdiction by jurisdiction basis. And if we wanted to have the access and the installation here, we have to pay for the separate licensing fees. So I don't know that we've specifically walked down the path to say if, if just the county has it, um, could they do all the, all the billing and collection? You know, that, that may be something that happens. Um, well, I, I was thinking about it from the perspective for, that there's one administrator, but that both, both facilities could access it for wherever the customer walks in at, we would have access mm -hmm. to the software at both places. Yeah, and I think they do it from a site license perspective so you know I don't know um, if that's even a model that they that they offer we could certainly look into it for the future I think that would be a great um, idea yeah I, I, I just don't know if that's a, a model that they even mm -hmm. that they even offer I know our financial software you know is not priced to where one one entity could buy it and and five could come on and you could build all five into the same database it, it just isn't isn't built that way so my okay. My hunch would be this would be similar, but we can certainly make the inquiries as we well, go into the future. Well, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. And they're really good to work with, so. Great. Yep. I was going to just add, uh, Councilmember Stevens, when you had mentioned about the collaboration, this somewhat is a slight digression, but eventually we're going to need to replace some of our telecommunications equipment, like our phone system. Not, not that I know right now whether or not the county or any other agency, public or private, is in that is in the same need that we are going to be in eventually. But when that happens, that's the kind of thing where I'm hoping maybe there's some greater purchasing power available by collaborating with another unit, especially if it's another unit of the government, to increase that volume. Okay, perfect. So. perfect. Okay, we had a motion. Did we have a motion? And, and we had support. Okay. Now we need a roll call. The fun part. Okay. Councilmember Spoolman? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Malama Shippers? Yes. Mayor Filkins? Yes. Motion carries. Okay. We are at the point in the agenda where we are going to have the introduction of ordinances and resolutions. Thank you. Um, Mayor and members of the City Council, uh, the uh, single item under this topic this evening is with respect to water cross connections. Uh, I am going to introduce it and then I'm going to ask Jeff to fill in some of the blanks. Uh, I will say that in your council packet it does have a uh, communication that takes from the ordinance itself the, the couple of provisions that are being added uh, as a part of the amendment. Uh, this is um, with respect to water cross connections and an effort for the city to become compliant with state law. Uh, so these are necessary amendments to our code. Uh, and if Jeff, if you could perhaps just explain what a water cross connection is and how this would impact or allow the city to um, try to prevent these issues in the future, that would be helpful. Yeah, uh, a water cross connection is any uh, connection in a building that might inadvertently allow the uh, portable drinking water to mix with the sewer water in your in your uh, in a in the building. So, for instance, if you had a sink with a hose, uh, if you had a, a a faucet with a hose in it that was in a sink and there was a stopper in the sink, that sink could fill up with water 
and the hose could be submerged and there's a cross connection there. If there was a fire someplace out in our system and the firemen got on our uh, fire hydrant and somebody had opened up the, the water to fill that sink, you could actually suck water back up into the system and create a, a cross connection and contaminate your drinking water. So what a cross connection program does is we go through and we make sure nothing like that exists. And some of it is plumbing issues where, the, where, where the, it's plumbed inadequately when the building's made. Some of it is just like that, where somebody would put a drop hose into a sink, and you say, no, you can't have a drop hose here. You've, you've got to keep the, the drop hose above the, you know, one inch above the top of the sink. That way, there's no possible way the sink would overflow first before it go up into the hose. So, you know, uh, there's multitude of cross connections. You have a cross connection in your house when you have a boiler in your house because you're, uh, ha um, your water will fill the boiler with water, or your, your water service will fill the boiler with water. And so we have to have a backflow device on there that would prevent water from coming back into the city system. Now, you always want to have that boiler hooked up to the water because it, a boiler uses water, so you need to replenish it. So there are cross connections that are in buildings that we know about, but we want to put on devices that will prevent it from feeding back into the city system. And so uh, the laws have changed a little bit and our, our code was a little outdated, so we're just sprucing it up and getting it back with the current laws that we have the right to go in, we have the right to inspect, we have the right to request that the people have their devices test it mm -hmm. so that they can uh, prove to us that they don't, uh, that they meet the criteria and there's not a, cross connection in their building so and this evening um, we're also the, the purpose would be to set the public hearing obviously for March 17 March 17 council meeting and it looks like it's when, when you're mentioning about having the right to for the public it's more for uh, new installs or, or repairs it's not just a matter of doing a citywide program no it's not well it, it is throughout the whole city and it would we would be going into existing uh, facilities you know uh, 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 auto dealerships uh, restaurants uh, our industries for years we've always done this on our industries because they're a high what I'd consider a high priority they have a lot of industrial stuff there that mm -hmm. you know we know about well there's stuff in uh, smaller places that maybe we don't realize. So we want to go to all these places and make sure that the city's water system is protected from cross connections from all these smaller areas also. So it's not something we're going to get to every year. You know, it's probably something that once every two to three years we'll get to the everybody because they'll take <coughs> it and we'll probably never get to the homeowners or residential. Um, just too too many, you know. But the businesses will probably, all, you know, be looking into and and some residentials. When our guys go in to do a meter repair, they'll certainly ask, uh, "Do you have a boiler here?" And if the resident says yes, they'll take a look and make sure they have the device on there. And okay, you're good to go. But it's you know, it's for new buildings, it's for remodeling, it's for existing. So thank you. <clears throat> I'll make a motion to adopt the resolution to introduce the ordinance that amends section 42-199 of the city code and set a public hearing for March 17, 2014. Support. Is there any further discussion? Sandy, could we have a roll call, please? Councilmember Stevens? Yes. Malama? Shippers? Yes. Woolman? Yes. Mayor Philkins? Yes. Motion carries. Then we also have uh, in our council packets the minutes of the uh, Cadillac Wexford Transit Authority meeting from January 16th, as well as the Downtown Development Authority meeting that was held on January 29th. And this is for our information pur purposes only. Okay, um, at this point we are at uh, the uh, end of the agenda and on to the uh, second public comment. 
We do ask that you um, hold your public comment to three minutes. And again, when you come to the podium, if you would tell us your name and uh, address, as well as writing it on the paper for us. Um, do you need to have an agenda if I want to speak about something? No, you're OK. OK. Um, it might be can you a come small up here? Thing. Well, you can probably hear me. Well, we want to make sure the people at home can hear you. Uh, it's something I run into uh, after I retired that Ask probably people don't name. think about too much. Excuse but me. I don't know during uh, this recession we had. Excuse me, ma'am. Could we have you state your name for the public? Pardon me? Could you state your name for the people at home? Kathleen Mary Williams. Thank you. And I live at 1230 Way Street. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry. That's okay. Anyway, um, I ran into this uh, because I have a little problem getting around. But I don't know if during the recession you had kind of slow collections on your water bills or not. And so I just thought I'd bring up something. You know, we, we're kind of modern about everything here, and we have a beautiful city. But when it comes to the water bill, you can't pay for it online. And the other thing is, if you're older people that are not computer literate, or whatever you call it, um, when you mail out the bills, all my other bills have an envelope to mail back. And our water bill does not. And so that's, I didn't know, uh, maybe if somebody, if you're an older person and you didn't have any envelopes in the house, you might have neglected to pay that bill. So the next month when you get the bill, you look at that and you think, now this has got to be wrong. So that may be some way where they're falling behind and paying the bill. So that, that's all. Thank you. You're welcome. Is there anyone else this evening? Okay, we'll go ahead and close public comment then. Thank you. At this time, we'll move to good of the order for this evening, and we'll go ahead and start with Mr. Stevens. Okay. Um, I am going to mention probably uh, the council members got it as well, the mayor and the, the public. Um, the board of review notices have gone out that that's the information on your taxes and um, in case it was missed there's a nice insert that uh, Mr. Roberts helped uh, put together that explains some information about the taxes and the going back to proposal A and some of the tax questions with that but I did want to mention in case people had missed it we had a couple people ask tonight uh, on March 12th from 9 a.m. to 4 a.m. or not 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Not wow. a.m. Oh, um, yeah, we we help all all shifts. And the March 13th from 3 p.m. to 9 p.m. March 18th from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. And then March 20th from 3 p.m. to 9 p.m. are the times that are open for people to come in with questions or concerns. So they have it mixed up too for those that would need to come during the day, but also a couple of days for an evening as well. So um, that's more for the information for the public if you didn't catch it. And uh, um, thanks again, um, Mr. Roberts, for helping put that information piece with it as well. That was the first item. Secondly, um, I wanted to, I know we've been crediting the council member Melamo, but a nice article again in the paper um, relating back to even the Detroit news picking up, um, we're going back to our innovation center and how this will eventually tie in with the manufacturing hubs and how Michigan was awarded one. And nice article in the paper as well on that and um, should be exciting for Cadillac and the industries as well. Then lastly, um, I know I've had a couple conversations with some council members more recently, and I know I was the one 
years ago that pushed heavily for an ethics ordinance. And I think it's it's been a, a great asset to have that for a community. Um, I think though, after talking with some council members as well as looking at our our first item with it, is that at least my intention wasn't to have this replace just normal employee issues and not to have it replace this just being done through the the normal manuals that it would be from an, the city manager to the employee. And uh, um, I'm thinking that this may be a chance and I, I would think that we may want to look at that and see about restructuring that ordinance. Um, and I know, you know, I've heard a lot of discussion, but in defense of Councilmember Mellam, I was there when he was told that this is the way that had to, to go forward. And I just, I think cost-wise, to spend that much money on something that could just be done through its normal employee relations. Uh, why we should have one that covers the council, covers boards and commissions, and covers things for employees not covered by our manuals, that's good, but I just don't want to see this become the normal routine for employee relations. So, I, you know, thinking of this forward, I, I'm curious later to maybe get responses back if that's something as a council we want to revisit to do any amendments to it. And on that, I'm done. Thanks. Thank you. Council Member Shippers. Okay, thank you, Mayor Filkins. Um, to piggyback a little bit on what Council Member Stevens spoke about um, with the ethics um, <clears throat> board or committee or whatever, another thing that I think we may want to revisit is who sits on that committee and to maybe get some community members to be on that committee. And because um, I think when it's just personnel when it's just um, city employees on that committee, it one sets them up for maybe taking a little bit of a more of a hit than what we would like that audience, that um, amendment to do. Um, and uh, I think it might make it more, um, I don't know, more community involved. So that's, um, I don't know if that's possible or if that's something to look at. So that's just piggybacking on that. I have a couple other things. I have something to complain about. There's somebody in my neighborhood who for the past few weeks has been um, operating his snowmobile right up Crippen Street. Um, a couple up, go, heading up there in the early evening and coming back late at night, either right on Crippen Street or in the alley between Crippen and River. And this individual is also heading right up over Diggins Hill when there are children on the hill sledding. And not only is this incredibly unsafe, but it's illegal. Um, you are not to operate snow machines, um, snowmobiles within the city limits. They tear up the streets. Um, and it's just, it's, it, it's against the law. Um, please, if you know of somebody who's doing that, would you tell them that, especially when there are children on the hill, that's just foolishness. Kids come sliding down, you know how fast kids move down that hill. And we're, that's an accident waiting to happen. So whoever that is, or if you know who that is, please tell them to knock it off. Secondly, um, this weekend is the Gopher Wood Benefit Concert. It's uh, Saturday night at 8 o'clock at the Elks. It's open to the public. This is our 30th year for Gopher Wood. And this, um, this performance this weekend um, has local and a little bit further afield musicians, some people who've played for us before, that volunteer their musical talent to help raise funds to fill our coffers so we can bring some great music. Next year, we also have a silent auction um, going on. You can get tickets for this event at Toy Town or at After 26 Cafe. And After 26 Cafe has a dinner prior to the Gopher Wood event that I believe starts at 5. And with your Gopher Wood ticket, you get a 10% discount. And at After 26, they also have performers there. I believe Mark Lagerway and uh, Bonnie Davis are playing at After 26. And on, after that, at Gopher Wood, 
There will be Frank Youngman will be playing. Um, Council Member Spoman's husband, Gary Van Houten, myself and my husband, Barry Lempe, Tom Schwartz, uh, Blake Elliott, Ralston Bowles, um, Bruce and Becca Ling from Hawks and Owls, and Zach Bunce, um, the manager down at the bike shop, will be playing too. So come on out for a wonderful evening of music and support local art in our community. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Spoman. Yeah, interesting comments about the ethics ordinance. I'm not. I'm. I think I'll withhold most of my comments. <laughs> that helps. Uh, <laughs> that helps us understand. Well. <laughs> Well, it seems like we followed procedure. It's kind of funny that now that we don't think it's working for us, we want to change it. Um, I don't think, I think the committee probably does need to be looked at. It just appeared to me that it seemed like the deck was a little bit stacked when you have the city manager, the city attorney, and a human resources professional that reports to the city manager. Just too many chances for not enough minds to be able to really um, have differing views because of the positions that they hold. That would be my only concern about what we've got so far with the ethics ordinance. And I think it will take a while for us to be able to work out any kinks in it to make sure that it works well for us. Um, I hope Marcus will be able to address um, Ms. Williams' concerns about the water bill payment issue. I know that there's a solution for that or Mr. Dietlin. Thank you, Councilmember Stevens, for being the council person who has done the Board of Review for every year for I don't know how long and Thank continues you. to do it. We really appreciate that. Uh, there is a run water notice out there, and uh, please run your water because <laughs> otherwise you'll be without water. And sometimes if you are running water, you'll still be without water. I'm without water, and it's no fun to be without water. Um, there is a placemaking public um, yeah. input period on March 4th, which is tomorrow from 5 to 7 p.m., the third floor of the Elks building. And this is a joint project between the Michigan Municipal League and Michigan State University to take a look at the piece of property that um, is part of our city park and Elks Alley area. Um, so it's like the back of the downtown, right in the core part of the downtown um, that goes into the city park. And to throw around some ideas on what we might want that place to look at, look like. So the public input is March 4th from 5 to 7, and then a presentation on March 5th, or not really a presentation, I guess, but just um, the physical design concepts will be available for viewing on March 5th from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the same location. If you're at all um, interested in that area, which is a lovely area, you're um, encouraged to attend that. Um, I still have some concerns about the clearing of sidewalks in town, and I know that by the time our next meeting comes around, we're not going to have this problem, but I would like to put it on the agenda to have a discussion about it. Um, and we talk about it every year, but I, I don't really see a lot of change happening. And I know this winter has been extremely difficult in so many ways for so many of us. But we have to be able to allow people to move around without having to be in a vehicle. And I visited other communities, and I've, I've started to pay a lot of attention to this. And one of the communities that's in my district is is a community that is, has much fewer people and fewer resources, I'm sure, than we have. And yet, immediately following <laughs> a very bad storm, pathways were cleared um, on the major thoroughfares so that people could walk down the main roads and they could get places and they were out using them. We have an ordinance in our community that says the, the owner of the property is supposed to clear the sidewalks. We don't enforce that ordinance. And I think that we really need to start enforcing that ordinance or at least 
somehow asking people to help us out to enforce the ordinance. My guess is that a lot of people still don't know that they're supposed to do it, or if they do know, you know, they're just turning their head aside and because nobody ever says anything. A couple of weeks ago, or a week and a half ago, I had several people from different parts of the state come and visit me in my office on Lake Street, and we walked downtown for lunch. I didn't say a word, but we walked past an apartment complex that hadn't cleared the sidewalks. We walked past a dental office that hadn't cleared the sidewalks. We walked past rental units where the landlord or the, the, the people who rent it didn't clear the sidewalks. We, I had to walk in the road. We all walked in the road quite a bit of the time. And we finally got downtown. And on the way back, somebody said something. Wow, doesn't your city have an ordinance so that people clear the sidewalks? It, we can do a better job of this. And I'd like us to at least have the conversation about how we can put something into place so that we can start out next year the right way. Um, and. You know, maybe we can have staff do a survey of other communities that are like us who have some success in making sure that landowners do this. Uh, that, that's my only suggestion at this point. I know Mark, uh, Marcus and I talked briefly about it today, and he gave me some information that is real current on this related to Howell community. and. Um, trying to force the issue on their residents and some backlash in the courts related to that. So there is that concern. But I still think that I'd like to have this discussion with the rest of you. I think it's a priority um, as much as I do. Thank you. Mr. Pecha. Um, <clears throat> thank you. Uh, just a couple of brief comments. I know that we mentioned um, already the uh, placemaking uh, public uh, opportunity tomorrow uh, and we mentioned the run water already so thank you uh, I did want to mention uh, and this is actually uh, more for City Council uh, that there is the Northwest Michigan Regional Prosperity Initiative meeting it's a big mouthful uh, this Friday uh, it's at noon at CTC they are going to be talking about um, area housing uh, and housing needs. Uh, the, uh, if, if anyone is interested in attending, if you could just pop me a quick email, I'd be happy to RSVP on your behalf. I am planning on attending. I do not know if there's going to be a study uh, that is going to come out on Friday or if this is just another step in their process with a study coming out following. Uh, but I think that this is an important issue uh, as they are doing a regional look on housing needs, uh, which is going to include Wexford and Masaki counties. Uh, and obviously we're the largest city in those two counties. Uh, and so there will be eventually an impact to us with respect to their results. When we have the results, you know, what, what does that mean and, and where do we go? Well, I think that would be a, a great catalyst for the council to, to use as starting a conversation about, you know, what the council would like to see for housing in, in the city. Uh, but it, this would be a good meeting. I, like I said, I'll be there in case no one else should be able to make it. I believe Jerry Adams will also be attending too. And that's this Friday. Uh, I did want to mention briefly, uh, with respect to the place plans meeting uh, tomorrow night and then the follow-up that they are going to be having on Wednesday, uh, that is not going to be their final report on, or, or study, if you will. That will be coming at some point this summer, uh, to my understanding. Uh, so I am not completely sure how, how developed their concepts on Wednesday are going to be. Uh, so in case you're not able to, to make it to that, uh, don't, don't feel so bad. There will be follow-up later. So, in the year. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, well, I would uh, like to just take a minute to add to the rest of the discussion by the council in regards to the ethics committee, and I think it would be a wonderful idea if we did revisit that. Um, I, I think that the, the concept of an ethics committee is really good. I actually agree with some of the things, uh, well, all of the things that you all have said uh, this evening. And I've been doing a little bit of research uh, 
in other cities who have that ordinance. And I definitely believe that if we call upon uh, people in our community to serve on that committee, that um, it, would, it would be a, a good improvement. And I also agree with Council Member Stevens in regards to who is covered under that ethics uh, policy. So I do look forward to having that conversation because I think we can do that a little bit better. Mayor? Yes. Well, I'm not sure if you were done with your comments, but I do have one more to add. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Um, uh, Kathleen, uh, Ms. Williams, you had mentioned about the utility billing. Currently, you're, you're, you're correct. There is not a way uh, to do it online. Uh, as Councilmember Spoman mentioned, I would have some information right now okay. this evening. Uh, you can work out uh, an arrangement uh, with our utilities department where there's a form that you can sign off on, and then they will um, uh, create an auto payment mechanism You'll still get a bill on a monthly basis advising what all your all of your usage charges are. However, it's automatically debited from uh, from a bank account of your choosing, and that's that's something that if you if you were to call the city's number seven seven five zero one eight one extension one two three, um, they can they can help you out or just swing by utilities during the day. Okay. So, okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sorry. That's okay. Um, in addition to our discussion uh, regarding the Ethics Committee, I would also uh, share that how much I appreciate the people in the community who are willing to step forward and serve on the different committees that we have uh, here at the city. Uh, all of our committees are out on the website. And uh, I was going through them recently and just uh, making note of the people in the community who are serving. And um, there are some vacancies. So I would encourage uh, people in the community to go out. If you are at all interested in serving in some capacity, go out and look and see if there's something that you would enjoy helping out with. And uh, we would certainly uh, uh, love to have you uh, be a part of those committees. Uh, I wanted to mention that uh, Saturday evening, I and my husband had the opportunity to go over to the auditorium. The uh, Chamber of Commerce's uh, leadership class held their annual variety show, talent show, over at the auditorium. And there's a lot of talent in Cadillac. And it was a wonderful evening. For those of you that don't know, the leadership project this year that uh, these folks are putting together is a new playscape that will take the place of the old swing set over across uh, at the beach across from the consumer's power um, facility. And they're really excited about it and uh, have some good uh, plans in motion to make that happen. Uh, a couple weeks ago I mentioned that the Cadillac ski team uh, represented us and uh, very well and won the regional uh, championship, both the girls and the boys team. Uh, this past week, they skied at state, and we have a state champion here in uh, the city of Cadillac. Keenan Cooper was state champion as uh, both the slalom and the giant slalom. So kudos to, to him and uh, for the coaches to get him there. And so that's all I have this evening. Anything else? OK. At this time, we need to move to a closed session to discuss a collective bargaining agreement with the United Steelworkers Local Union 14317. I'll make the motion to um, adjourn to closed session for the collective bargaining agreement discussion with um, United Steelworkers Local Union 14317. And Sherry, if I may add, uh, to invite uh, Jeff Dietland. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And to uh, invite Jeff Dietland. Bruce. Bruce DeWitt. And Owen Roberts. Bruce DeWitt and Owen Roberts. I thought they were just all here because they enjoy coming to these <laughs> meetings. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, that too. That yeah. part of it. <laughs> sorry, I had my notes to invite you, and I just skipped right over it. I'll support that motion. Sandy, could we have a roll call, please? Councilmember Melama, Shippers? Yes. Coleman? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Mayor Falcons? Yes.
Motion carries. A motion to return to open session. I'll make a motion that we return to open session. Support. Do we have a roll call, Sandy? Councilmember Shippers? Yes. Foreman? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Malama? Mayor Falcons? Yes. Motion carries. Uh, Mayor, Mr. members of the City Council, if I may, uh, would like at this time to request a motion that would approve the, tenement, the tentative settlement agreement between the City of Cadillac and the United Steelworkers Local Union, number 14317. I'll make that motion. Support. You want to change. Any further discussion on that? Are we all set? The only, I just quick, and I know I, I know I get <laughs> lengthy in words, and I know that bothers some people sometimes, <laughs> but. Um, Who does that bother? T.I. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't believe that. But I will say, I, I think this is a good time to note that these two departments a lot of times get overlooked. And um, even though we did spend a few extra minutes talking what about What two departments are those, Councilmember the, Stevens? The Utilities Department and the Street Department. But um, the say thank you to the, the workers, because especially like this winter, the, the comments we get positive on the streets being cleared and um, also the utilities workers um, they do a lot of a lot of time behind the scenes and away from their families and this is a good time to give them that little thank you for that you're right and that's thank it you. good job <laughs> you have one less minute now okay. okay sandy could we have a roll call please house member spoolman yes stevens yes malama shippers yes mayor Falcons. yes Motion carries. And with that, we will adjourn the meeting. We are. Thank you very much.